Ladies and gentlemen, today we will push the boundaries further than they have ever been pushed before, because we are going to set a new TED record for turning this entire audience into rock stars. And we're going to do it in only five minutes. Now, for some of you who might be a bit skeptical about this plan, I've put together this detailed schedule. It's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Uh, we're going to spend the first minute learning the basics of the piano. Then I'll introduce some friends of mine. Kermit will come along and wave his magic frog wand. And you'll all become rock stars. It's that simple. So let's get started on the basics of the piano. A piano has lots of keys, both white and black. What you need to know is that the keys are arranged into a repeating pattern that repeats all the way up the keyboard. To find the pattern, you look for two black keys, followed by three black keys. You take all the white keys that they touch, and there you have a set of 12 white and black keys, which repeats all the way up the keyboard. The white keys in that set have letter names that go from A to G. Once you get to G, you start again from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. If that pattern sounds familiar, that's because it's the alphabet. Now, it's time to introduce the first of my friends. She's very important to me. She's about to become very important to you. Her name is C. The first thing you need to know about C is how to find her. She's easy to find. You look for two black keys, you go to the left, and there's C. We know the keyboard is a repeating pattern of 12 keys, so it doesn't matter which two black keys you find. As long as you go to the left, you will always find C. Now, the other thing you need to know about C is that she has lots of white friends. <laughs> now, what I mean by that is that you can play any combination of white keys, either all at once or in sequence, and they will always sound good together. Let me show you what I mean. I was only playing white keys, and they all seemed to get along together. Now, when we play more than one key at once, that's called a chord. And Lou is very good at playing chords, because he only has three fingers. <laughs> so we're going to take a leaf out of Lou's book. We're going, to, we're going to play with only three fingers as well. We're going to use our thumb, our middle finger, and our little finger. To play with those three fingers, we place our thumb on the key of C. We spread our other fingers out one per key, and we play with our thumb, our middle finger and our little finger. And that is the chord of C. Now, the great thing about these three fingers is that we can move our thumb up and down the white keys, spread our other fingers out one per key in any position, and as long as we play only white keys with our thumb, our middle finger and our little finger, those, those keys will always sound good together. At least six out of seven times. The seventh time doesn't always sound so good, but Sometimes it does. Um, but we're interested in the chords of rock music, and that's where Kermit comes in. You see, Kermit serendipitously discovered the chords of rock music when he decided to play hopscotch. Let me tell you about Kermit's big hopscotch adventure. Kermit wanted to play hopscotch, so he drew the numbers one to eight on the ground. He started at number one, he threw his little stick, and it landed on number four. So Kermit had to jump from one all the way up to number four. That was a big jump for a little frog. So after that, he just sort of stumbled onto number five. He was pretty tired, so he ended up falling asleep on number six. Kermit's numbers were one, four, five, and six. If we take those numbers and lay them on the keyboard so that C is number one, then F becomes number four, G becomes number five, and A is number six. Now, we can play chords on each of those numbered keys by using Lou and his three fingers. We place our thumb on the, on the key that we labeled number one, C, we spread our other fingers out one per key and we play with our thumb, our middle finger, and our little finger. We can do the same for F, we can do the same for G, and we can do the same for A, and those are the chords of rock music. So now, it is time for revision. I told you about C's white friends and how we can use them to play any combination of white keys, either all at once or in sequence, and they'll always sound good together. I told you about Lou and his three fingers, which we can use to play Kermit's four chords, one, four, five, and six. And if we play those chords in the order shown on this slide, then you have the makings of rock stars as diverse as U2, Crowded House, Billy Joel, even the Black Eyed Peas. 
let me show you what I mean. You were amazing And we did amazing things If I could, then I would I'd go wherever you will go Forever young I want to be forever young Whenever I fall At your feet I can't live With or without you Never mind, I'll find someone like you. Ladies and gentlemen, the list goes on and on. That is over 100 songs that you have learnt in only five minutes. I think that fully qualifies you as a TED audience of rock stars. Congratulations. Now, I am not the first to reveal the magic chords of rock music. The Axis of Awesome and Tripod have both done that in their own ways. But you probably didn't need any of us, me or these guys, to tell you about the magic chords of rock music because you had probably heard Leonard Cohen's song, Hallelujah, which tells you in the very first line that there are secret chords of music. He tells you in the first line and after the end of the first verse, he gets a bit bored and he just starts singing the names of the magic four chords. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift. It's Comet's big adventure, hallelujah. You see, he's got all of the important details in there of Kermit's big adventure. Kermit starting on number one, him putting in the major lift to get up to number four. He's got the fifth and then the minor issue of Kermit falling asleep on chord number six. Leonard Cohen has told you exactly the, the secret chords of music and he plays them as he sings them as well. Those are exactly the chords that I just played. So you see, the patterns of music extend beyond rock and pop and into the realm of folk music and rock and reggae and funk and jazz and even classical styles. In fact, most of the music that you listen to will be based on the four chords that you've learnt today. The patterns of music are universal. They are simple and they transcend the boundaries of language, culture and experience. There is a whole world of harmony and melody out there and nothing can stop you from joining in. Thank you.